Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can get up and running with a blazing fast real-time GraphQL backend on DigitalOcean in under 60 seconds. So let's head to the DigitalOcean marketplace and you'll see Hasura as one of the options in the DigitalOcean marketplace. And then you can head on and create the Hasura GraphQL droplet. Now once you click on that, you'll be redirected to your dashboard to choose what droplet size you want and what region you want. In case you don't already have a DigitalOcean account, click on the link in the video description below to get a referral credit of $100 when you get started. And in case you're not logged in, you'll get logged in automatically and get redirected to this page. Now, once you're on this page, you'll have Hasura selected as the droplet template and you can go and choose the $5 droplet and choose a region that is closest to you. So in my case, I'm gonna choose the San Francisco region. Let's go ahead and create this droplet. This droplet should take about 30 seconds to get created and we'll wait till that happens. All right, so once this droplet gets created, you'll see the IP here. So take this IP and open it in your browser. It might take a few seconds for this page to load because we're waiting for Hasura and Postgres to kind of get started. So give it a few seconds. That's it and you have the Hasura console running. When you run the Hasura droplet on DigitalOcean, you get a Hasura service running, um, which is powering this UI and the GraphQL API. And you also get a Postgres database. Tables that we create on this UI will get created on the Postgres database. So let's go and create a author table. And let's say every author has an ID, which is an auto incrementing integer. And every author has a name, which is a text field. We will set ID to be the primary key. Now let's go in and create a few uh, fields here. So let's say the author name is author1. And let's create another author called author2. Once you do that, you'll see that these two authors are available and um, these two rows have gotten created in your database. What you can instantly start doing is querying this with GraphQL as well. So you can run a query and um, hit control space to get the autocomplete. So you have author, ID and name and then hit the play icon here to run the query so you'll see that you're getting that JSON response so your GraphQL endpoint served on this URL um, you know with this query and this response object is kind of ready to go and you can start using your web mobile apps to start connecting to this um, and start building with GraphQL let's try out a few other GraphQL queries so let's try out a mutation to insert a new author so let's insert an author with the name author3 and let's capture the auto-generated ID as a response. So we have that and now if we go and run the same query again, we'll see that we have three authors. We can create another table and then use relationships between the tables to try out GraphQL that traverses multiple models. So let's create an article table. Every article also has an ID. Every article also has an author ID, which is the author of the article. And every article, let's say, has a title. Um, and let's say, has some content. Set the primary key to ID and create this. And let's go and insert for author one. This is article one by author one. And we're gonna set the same thing as the content. And let's create uh, another article for the same author. So article two. And then let's do article three for author two. Let's change this to author two. And um, you'll see that these rows get created in the table. Let's also set up a relationship. And we can do that by creating a relationship from the article to the author table. So let's call that the author relationship. And we'll use the author ID column to relate to the author table via the ID column. So now every article has an author relationship and let's do the, let's try it the other way around as well. So every author, let's give every author a list or an array of articles. So we'll say articles, which comes in through the ID column of the author table and the author ID column of the article table. And so now when you head to GraphQL, to the GraphQL tab, you can make a query for the author, you know, the ID, the name. And if you do a control space, you'll see articles and you can fetch the article's title 
uh, and the ID as well. And so you can see that your GraphQL response now contains the ID, the name, and the list of articles for each author, right? Um, to try out more GraphQL queries for queries, mutations, subscriptions, uh, mutations to insert, update, and delete data, head to the Hasura documentation and learn how to kind of make different kinds of queries, uh, mutations, and subscriptions. Before using this in your application, you should also secure your endpoint because right now the Hasura console is open for anybody to access, so you should secure that and you can read the documentation for figuring out how to do that. If you need any help, feel free to join the Discord community. Now, in this case, we have a database and we're running the database in the same droplet, but in case of a data critical application, you might want to move to DigitalOcean's managed Postgres offering, and that's super easy to do with Hasura. DigitalOcean's managed Postgres offering is a great setup because it's super easy to scale. You don't have to worry about security and you know you can just click on a button and turn on backups for your database. So let's head back to our DigitalOcean dashboard and create a database. We'll create a Postgres database and we'll choose the smallest um, database size. We'll set the same region to where we'd created the Hasura droplet. And let's go ahead and create this. This might take a few minutes, so be patient. But as soon as your database, as soon as your managed database is up, head to the connection string. And we need to configure the Hasura droplet to use this connection string to connect to this managed Postgres database instead of the internal Postgres database that's in the droplet. To access the droplet, I'm going to head to my email and I'm going to SSH into the droplet. So let's do that. The first time you do this, you'll be prompted for resetting your password. So let's reset our password. Once you've SSH, head to the etc slash Hasura folder and you'll see a Docker Compose file. This is the file that powers the Hasura service and the Postgres service that's running on the droplet. Let's go to this database URL and change this to the connection string that we have from our managed database. And as soon as you do that, you can just do a docker compose up minus D. This will restart Hasura to use the managed Postgres database version. Once that's done, let's head back to our browser and refresh this page. You'll see that there are no tables here. That's because we've point pointed it to a new Postgres instance. And for this demo, let's try to import an existing database dump into the managed Postgres database and take a look at how Hasura gives you GraphQL on an existing database. What I have with me is an SQL file that has a sample music database. And let's connect to that. So I can PSQL into the database just to see that this is working. So that's great, this is working. Let's now import this database dump. Now you can see this database is getting created and data is getting imported. Once we do that and we refresh this page, Hasura will tell us that there are tables in our database which are not exposed over GraphQL. I can selectively expose a few tables or expose all of them. And then Hasura also prompts us with saying that there are foreign keys in this state in this database which can be converted to GraphQL connections or relationships. And so let's track all of these relationships. And you can see that this is a music database. So we have artists, we have albums, um, you know, albums have tracks, tracks belong to playlists. Let's try to browse this with GraphQL. So I make a query to fetch a particular album and the ID and let's see what else an album has. It has a title. And let's also fetch the artist of this particular album and get their name. So here you can see that we're fetching all of the albums and each album's artist. And so we're fetching a few, um, we're fetching all of the there are about 347 albums in this database, and so we're fetching all of that. We can also make aggregate queries with GraphQL. Hasura provides a GraphQL, Hasura provides a GraphQL type to query the um, aggregate on a particular model. So we can fetch the number of tracks that we have in our database. So we're fetching the track and we're aggregating by count. So we can see that we have um, you know, an increasing number of tracks in our system. Every time I run this query, you can see that the number is increasing. And this number is increasing because we have a data import that's running here. If I change this query to a subscription, you'll see that this value is starting to change life, right? And this is because Hasura gives you real-time GraphQL APIs over subscriptions, which make it super easy for you to 
track something that's changing in your database and build a feature on your web or mobile app that uses GraphQL to kind of fetch that data in real time and build real time or reactive experiences uh, on the app, right? That concludes my demo. And uh, like I said before, feel free to join in on the Hasra Discord community and uh, check out our docs and our GitHub repo if you need any help or have any questions.